Hey everyone, Joe here. Welcome to part 13 of the Audacity Accelerator course. In this part, we're going to be diving straight into a session and editing a podcast. I'm going to show you the tools and techniques that you have at your disposal in Audacity to get you the best, most professional sounding podcast possible. And you'll also find out how to edit in intros, outros, uh, background music and more. So I've opened up a session, you can see the project window here. I've imported the two speakers. So I've got two tracks at the top there, two mono tracks uh, with two speakers of the podcast and then another stereo track for the intro music. Now, if you've only got one, uh, one stereo track, you can bring that in. Uh, just bring in all, just import in all the tracks that you need for your podcast. If you're not sure how to import audio yet, just hit the link on the screen or in the description where I go over importing. So the goal when editing a podcast is to just make it sound as pleasant to listen to and as succinct as possible, remove any errors, any mistakes or any artifacts, anything that's not nice to listen to. Uh, so we're going through, we're shortening spaces um, where there's just dead air. We're removing um, errors or, or where, where somebody's had to repeat something. We're rem removing pops and clicks and, and ta table taps, things like that, just making it sound a lot more professional and, and more pleasant for the, listen to, the listener to enjoy. Also, we're placing the music. So let's start with that first. I'm going to show you how to place the music um, in, in place and how to blend it nicely with the rest of the audio. Um, let's just take a quick listen to what we've got. This is an episode of Talk Design. This episode I, I actually guessed it on, so I thought I'd just use that as a demonstration. So we've got our intro here. Welcome to Talk Design, the show where creatives... And we've got Adrian, the host here. He's also known as Joe... And then, yeah, we've got some some of the Very second voice so there. nice to be speaking to you finally. And This is obviously recorded much lower. So right off the bat, just to make it easier to edit while we're listening. Thank you very much. Let's bring the gain up on on that that second track. Have a listen again. Thank you very much. It's so nice to. Welcome to. The, the, the host is still a lot louder, so let's bring him down a little bit. Bring the guest up a bit more. Thank you very much. It's so nice to be speaking to you finally. And oh yes, you've done some work on the part. Okay, let's bring that up one more dB. And, and that's pleasant enough to listen to. We can go over the, the mixing and the balancing at a later stage. But as you can see with the intro, it's quite long, 30 seconds. Um, and and men by you. Thank you for listening. The talking I finishes hope here. You enjoy. So we don't want to wait for all that to finish. We need to bring that audio, the dialogue back and fade out, fade out the music so we've got a nice transition into the dialogue. So first thing we're going to do is bring bring this dialog back. So <clears throat> your default tool, the selector tool, you can't drag anything. You'd have to select everything, cut and paste. That's just really awkward. So instead, what we're going to do, we're going to use this time shift tool, which you'll find up here on your tools toolbar. So if you click on that one with the two arrows, the time shift tool, and you hold the left mouse button and you'll find you can drag the audio around. And then again with this one here. Now you can only drag it forward if, if you've got a break in the audio. So let's join those clips together just by clicking on that, that separation and simply delete some to bring it back because we've got no space here. So we're going to delete all that, all that at the beginning. So if you go back to your, your selection tool, select all that dead air with that bit of shuffling at the beginning. And then rather than just deleting, because if you hit delete, the delete key, it's gonna, gonna slide everything back. If we undo that, we want to do a split delete instead. I'm gonna use a shortcut for the split delete, which is Control Alt K or Command Alt K on a Mac. So if you select the audio, hit that, and then oh, you've just gotten rid of all that dead air there. Let's do it for that as well. Now, <clears throat> what we can do now is go back to our time shift tool 
and then we can move it back. But the problem is, if you move one back, and then you move the other back, and just sort of put it where you think it should go, your timing's gonna be a little bit off, and it could affect the audio later on. So you wanna move both of those at exactly the same time. Now to do that, we need to turn on sync lock. So if you go into tracks in the menu bar, sync lock tracks on or off, and you can see that little clock's appeared there. Now when we move our audio, it's sliding everything along. But we don't want to be moving the music. So what we can do to remove that from that music from the group is going to edit and we're going to open up a label track just by adding a label at selection. Now what this has done is made a label track. We haven't gone over label tracks yet, um, but what they, they do is basically let you label certain parts of, of your audio within the project window. So for example, uh, we can say dialogue starts just by clicking on that box. You can make as many of these as, as you like, but we'll, we'll go into that later on. For the moment, we just want that label track there so that we can use it to divide up our tracks. So if we move that up by clicking on the label track, uh, the, the drop down, move track up, what that does is creates a stop, um, a, a termination for for the uh, for the sync lock. So you can see these the, the the everything below the label track doesn't have have the sync lock. So now if we go back to our time shift tool and move around. It's just moving the labels and our dialogue, which is great. So to recap, we want to turn sync lock on, which is under the, in, under the tracks menu. And we want to open up a label track, which is under the edit menu and then labels. And then we're going to be selecting our time shift tool. So let's bring, let's start bringing that back. Just over the, over the end of the, the audio there, the music. Turn may inspire you. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoy. My guest today on talk. Okay, we need a bit more of a gap than that, so let's move that up. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoy. My guest today on a bit more, and that should be fine. Now, rather than having this audio just playing and then stopping all of a sudden at the end, I want a nice little fade out on the music. So. Going back into our tool menu here, there's another new tool for you, the envelope tool. So if we click on the envelope tool, you can see that it's brought these, these nice blue bars on top of all the audio. Now what you can do is drag the amplitude or the volume or the level of a piece of audio up or down in at certain points. So where that dialogue starts, we're gonna click, and that's at max volume. And then where we want the music to finish, maybe give it around five seconds. We're gonna click again, and then you can drag that to sort of fade out the audio for a nice smooth end. I'm just gonna delete that because I don't want it there at all. There we go. Using the delete key there, or you can use Control K. And then we can have a nice smooth, smooth stop to the music. Let's listen now. If you enjoy. My guest today on Talk Design is Joe Efterhew. Joe is also known as Joe Crow. Perfect. And then just click back to the selection tool to hide those. Now we're going to get into editing the actual the actual dialogue. So you can see on my track it's quite low in volume. I want to balance that out um, just to make it easier to edit, easier to hear. And it's something we're going to have to do at the end anyway. So let's just select all of my my audio on that track there. We can go over to normalize under the effects menu. And this is basically what normalize does is it increases or decreases the level, the level, the volume of a certain track um, so that it's not going over a certain level. So this is minus 2 dB. That's uh, if we click OK on that. That in itself is a bit of a problem though um, because it's barely made any difference with the audio. If we zoom in and click on that, that peak there, 
and zoom in with the, the magnifying glass. I'm just going to see what's going on there. Um, I have this giant foam ball on, on the end. So let's just highlight that first and reduce the level of that using going to Effect, Amplify, and then you can reduce it by, by a fair amount. Let's just say 8 decibels for now. Now, if we try and normalise again, it should give us a much healthier signal. So Effect, Normalise, OK, and there we go. So if we listen, listen to them next to each other now, they should be much more balanced you to to make something as close to that as possible or maybe if they're less experienced experience to necessarily yeah there we go much much more balanced so now it's just a case of listening through to the whole podcast and finding any uh, any pops clicks breaths gaps mistakes anything like that and deleting them effectively or there might be some shifting around that you might need to do but you will need to listen to the whole podcast if you want to ensure a, a really great sound for the whole thing i'm not going to do the whole thing for you in this video um, i'm just going to give you an example of how everything works and the tools that you'll need and you'll be able to do do it across your whole podcast so let's hit play my guest today on talk design is joe efterhue joe is also known as Joe Crow, so the audio nice so pro. Now, Nothing Joe needs doing. is an audio pro. That's what he does. Thank you. Right. Now, already, before I've even said a word, there's already something I want to get rid of. This little lip smack, that kind of... They're really quite horrible in the ears, especially if you've got headphones on. Thank you. So I just want that to go. So, again, we've got that sync lock on because if, you, if you're only editing on one track, it's going to affect the timing for the whole thing. So we can just select all that. Don't need that. Don't need that dead air either. And then delete it. So either press the delete key or control K. And then you can see it pulls everything back. Now let's listen. To talk design. Thank you very much. It's so nice to be immediately much more professional and, and smooth. Again, we've got a big gap there. We could just highlight that. Delete. Let's have a listen. To talk design. Thank you very much. It's so nice to be speaking to you finally and, and be on the podcast myself. Cool, man. Well, yes, you've done some. So when you listen to podcasts, this is what's been done. It's all been smoothed out. I mean, I'm not the best speaker on podcasts at all. Uh, so there's a lot of ums and ahring and, and gaps. But even with, with the pros, you get a lot of that. So they do often do plenty of editing. Let's just carry on, see what else we can find. You'll start to notice things as well, like like that. There's obviously something going on there that we probably don't want. Let's keep listening. Brilliant. I've really enjoyed what you've brought <laughs> to it. Um, okay, now there I sort of do a little chuckle, um, which is fine. I would leave that in there normally. But if you do have somebody speaking over someone else and you don't want them speaking over them, you can turn off sync lock because only, we only want to affect one track. Highlight that. And then you can do this in two ways. You, you don't want to hit delete because like like I said before, it, it pulls everything everything back that way. So you can either do your split delete, which was control or command, then alt and then K, which just takes the chunk out. So if we play back. I've really enjoyed what you've brought to it. Um... Okay, it's gone. Or you can replace it with silence, which is control or command L and then it puts silence there instead. Whichever one you want to use, um, whichever you feel is best for the situation. I've really enjoyed Let's listen to this clip to here. Um, one of the okay, so we've got an um, a pause, and a I don't think any of that is needed, to be honest, so we can get rid of all that. Don't forget to turn your sync lock back on, and then we can probably get rid of that breath as well there to it one of the things that brilliant i've really enjoyed what you've brought to it one of the things that fascinates me much smoother much more pleasant to listen to now when you're editing you're going to be doing a lot of scrolling left and right um, to keep up or to keep up with the cursor or to find certain parts you don't want to be going right down here and playing with this thing it's a bit a bit clunky um, uh, and it will slow down your workflow but if you hold the shift key and scroll your mouse wheel it's going to scroll left and right. 
similarly to if you don't hold the shift key, it'll be going up and down. There's one more tool that I'm gonna show you quickly that will really speed things up if you have both speakers on the same track. Now I don't really recommend that because then you can't make separate edits, but if you do happen to have both speakers on the same track, you can highlight the dialogue and use something called truncate silence, which is a tool that deletes all the silence for you. So it um, just makes everything more concise. So if you go to effect, truncate silence, and then th the threshold is how quiet the audio has to be for it to consider it silent. Um, so say minus 40 dB, for example, and how long it has to be for it to, to consider it silent. So half a second. So if you click OK now, you can see that it, it's deleted. Um, it's pulled all the silences back to a maximum of half a second. Yeah, I think so. Um... So I do I mix music j just to kind of spe speed up the flow. Personally, I'd only use this in, in certain situations. Um, also, because some silences you might want to keep in there, especially if it's quite a sort of emotional section in your podcast or maybe, or, or if it's a comedy podcast and you want to keep in that comic timing, it's not always going to be a kind of cut and dry, just get rid of all the, all the silence, um, but it's there if you need it. And lastly, you've got your standard copy, cut and paste tools. So if you want something repeated, like a piece of music, for example, let's say our podcast had the same intro as it had outro uh, and you just wanted to, maybe before you put the fade out in, you just wanted to grab it. You can just highlight all of that with your selection tool, then do control C or command C or use the, use the button there. That will add it to your to your clipboard and then we could scroll all the way to the end all the way it's quite a long podcast and then click at the end where you want it and do control or command v or click paste and then again you can use the uh, the time shift tool to slide that around where you need it and, and the envelope tool now that you've got your podcast edited and sounding as clean and professional as possible, that's where the mixing stage comes in. But before we look at mixing, first we're gonna take a look at editing music in part 14. So if, you, if you're editing music as well, um, or if you're just editing podcasts and you wanna pick up an extra couple of editing tips, then part 14 is gonna be of help. So hit that subscribe button and the bell icon below so you're the first to know when that comes out. Leave a like if this video helped you and let me know in the comments section below what podcast you work on. It'd be great to hit, see some podcast links so I can take a listen to, to your work. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in part 14.